at the age of 10, I had to be a parent, I had to be a provider, I had to be a worker. I took a taxi to Deppen. Okay. Who am I going to? I did not You don't know. know. Where am I going? I did not know. Don't know. All I knew that is that uh, all I knew at the time was that I could not bear the situation that I'm at that, home. that is at home. Yes. Yes. So I left. And you wanted to do something. I wanted to do something about and it. And taking so, a very huge risk. A very huge risk. Actually, you will understand that it was a huge risk indeed. Yes. This is my diploma in um, risk management and security. Yes. He kept the degree. Yes. yes. This is a certified for the and uh, um, as much as this is a certificate, ne? Yes. This is the most, most I, I don't know what to say. Well, this is a rare course. This is a rescue certified for examination. Yes. This is one course that I take it in a senior course. Yes. And we are waiting the one of the, the, the masters. masters. Yeah. Yes. And the PhD. And the PhD is coming. Is coming. Hello guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. My name is Kwanda Inyazeka. Uh, if you are new here, thank you so much for coming through. We are talking about everything, entrepreneurship, financial education, running your own business, as well as entrepreneurship. Please consider subscribing. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate your support, guys. This channel is growing, guys. We're now approaching 2,000 subscribers. And I was featured yesterday on News Briefly, South Africa. Please go check it out and read more about me. Uh, thank you. So today I'm not alone uh, and I'm not in the familiar space that you normally see myself in. But I'm in Pretoria and I'm not alone. I'm with uh, Captain Wanda Zondi. Uh, he's going to tell us about his book, uh, No Easy Battle, as you can see it, this one. Uh, yeah, and he's going to just tell us about himself and before I, uh, I, I let him introduce himself uh, I'm just gonna tell you what I know about him and he's going to also elaborate on some of the things that I'm going to mention here so Mr. Wanda Zondi uh, or Captain Wanda Zondi let me put it that way yes he works for the South African National Defense Force at a major rank he's also a, an academic he holds master's degree in criminal justice he has uh he's a phd candidate uh recently accepted for phd he's a certified fraud examiner he's an intellectual property crime investigator he's a cyber crime investigator he's a qualified pi he's also an entrepreneur he runs his own private investigating company which is uh flying yeah. yes, yes. So, yeah, uh, welcome to our YouTube channel, Captain Wanda Zondi. Thank you very, very much, Wanda. And uh, I'm honored to be here in your space. Thank you so I've been much. I'm bothering you that I want to be in your space, so I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much for also allowing us to come into your space much to have this interview. Much Thank appreciated. Yes. So, uh, the first question that I'm going to ask you, uh, could you please uh, introduce yourself, tell us who is Mr. Wanda Zondi, uh, what do you do, like your career, your oh. lifestyle, uh, oh. and everything? All right. Um, thank you, Wanda, for the opportunity. And uh, to your viewers, uh, viewers, first, I would like to uh, urge you, call your friends, your families, your cousins, your, your, your grandmothers, your grandfathers, great-grandfathers to subscribe into his um, YouTube channel. Thank you. Uh, I think it's, um, it's one of its kind. It's always good for me. I'm, I normally say that I'm very, I'm very jealous of um, black success. So I think if you miss now, there will be a time whereby you want to join, but it will be full. So make use of, of the opportunity, this future, and it, it is very bright. They are coming to me now. Um, like years, got a crusade. I'm captain. Okay, I'm known as a captain, but uh, I'm no longer a captain. I'm major. Wanda Zondi serving in the National Defense Force. Uh, I'm a paratrooper by profession. I'm currently serving in the investigation field within the National Defense Force. Uh, I joined the military in 2007 in Cape Town, then I moved to Otsoran, um, where I trained, I did my basic training. Um, during the time when I was doing my basic training, I also did um, paratrooper selection, which I passed in June 2007. Paratrooping being that you get into an aircraft while it's on the ground, it flies with you, it takes off with you, 
while it's in the sky you leave it there because it's delaying you you want to go back to the ground you leave it you are parachuting down to the ground then from Otsuara I moved to Plumfontein where I completed my parachuting I then moved to Kimberley where most of my career has been then I moved to, I recently moved from Kimberley to Pretoria in 2018 and I've been to, in Pretoria 2018 and uh, in the course of my military career up to so far, I've achieved a number of things which I'd like to give credit to the military in terms of academics, like what I said, and personal personal growth also. You know, as coming from the rural areas, uh, first of all, when you get into a space, into a working space, you have to develop your self-confidence. Because coming from an environment whereby you were nobody, it affects you. Yes. It yes. affects you badly, badly. So it's a bad living. When you start working, you still have a bed, you have something to overcome, which is you must build yourself. Yes. So while others are getting ahead of you, you have you, you, you get delayed because you have to build yourself. You have to teach yourself how to stand and speak in front of people, how to engage with people, yes. how to go for what you want. So it's not an easy task, but it's doable and uh, the joy that comes when you have achieved that, yes. it's immeasurable. Uh, I think Gwanda will have questions at the rest of the things and how did I get to become an author and all those things. Yes. I don't know if I, I can leave it there for now. Yes, yes, okay. you can leave it there. But I just want to take you back. Uh, can you like paint a picture for us of how like your childhood was like? All right. Yes. Thank you for that question. Uh, the, my childhood, I don't think I ever had a childhood, a childhood in my life. I don't know what is that. To be honest with you, I don't know what is that. Yes. Because um Kwanda is gonna we're gonna talk about that the book. The book that yes. I I um I published, No Easy Bad, it tells a story of my journey whereby <clears throat> at the age of ten I had to be a parent, I had to be a provider, I had to be a worker. We lost our father when we were ten. We are, I'm from a family of ten kids and then um we are survived by, by our mother. So when my, when my father passed away, things were bad when he was still alive, but uh, um, they became worse when he passed away. So um, going to sleep with nothing on your stomach, it was, it was a norm for us and uh, there was nothing untoward about it. Yes. We knew that it's like that. We would just get excited when you when when get something to eat. It would go for days. So being the eldest son in the family at the age of 10, in the location I was doing mud bricks um, for the neighbors, and uh, I, I remember very well there was a church that was being built at the time. I normally look at that church when I pass, because it's not far from my home. I say, I normally say that I built this church yes. because every mud brick that is there was prepared by myself. By yeah. Yes. So I, that's, that was my job. And that was not the only job because you, I could not do mud bricks every day. I used to head carefully. So I was a shepherd at that age. So um, I don't know. Ask me now, Gwanda, what, how do I balance that life? I won't tell you. I don't yes. know. But all I know is that um, I was just juggling between jobs. As long as sometimes we we'll get paid by, or maybe if I did my breaks for a, a, this certain family, uh, my payment would be um, a basin of million. Oh, then okay. I take home. And for me, that was that was great. Yes. That was great. I felt yes. like I'm a man. Um, in uh, in such that in 2000, and, <clears throat> 2000 and, uh, no, not 2000, 1998, when I passed my standard seven, yes, um, it was clear to me that I was not gonna attend school, and I made peace with it. Though at school I was one of those kids because then we're using positions, yes, not yes. Uh, yeah positions. I was playing between position one, two, and three. That yes. that's where I was. So I was. I would like to believe that I was a smart kid at yes, the time. Yes, you were definitely smart. <laughs> yes. I would like to believe so. So. Uh, when I passed my standard seven, it became clear to me that uh, the following year I was not going to attend school because I approached family members to say that, can you please assist? Uh, I want to go to school next year, but none was budging until one of, in English they call it uncle, but Uta Tom Dana okay. yeah, offered, offered me an opportunity, a lifetime opportunity, but here is the opportunity. He said, no, 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 it's fine, I'll assist you. But the following year, you have to head my cafe for the whole year. Yes. Then I'll save money, enough money for you. So the following year, so I'll have a gap year. I'll take you to school. That was the best offer that I've ever had. So I took the opportunity. I started heading the kettle throughout November, December, January. One faithful day when I was on my way um, to the farms, I passed by my school. Uh, one, um, then Miss Jordan, who was my next teacher. I met her as I was entering the school. Hey, all, in all excitement. 
wonder how are the things, how is the school? I said, no, 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 I'm not attending, I'm not attending school this year. I will attend school next year. And I explained the situation to yes, her. Yes. She said, not on her watch. Run home, go and call your mother. I, I went home, I called my mother. I saw them from a distance conversating. But then I saw my mother crying. I saw her crying. I don't know what was, I didn't know what was happening. The next order that came from was run as fast as you can, go home, get whatever that you have that you can wear. That's great. I remember with a plastic I was holding like yes, <laughs> barefoot. Yes. The next thing I found myself in Miss BC given an opportunity to attend high school. Um, I don't know if I should take you through after passing the trick. Yes, please. Okay, yes, okay. Please. We want to this hear. We want to hear all the story. Yeah. So, and, I, uh, I, can I please disturb you? Right. And uh, I sometimes I always say that this book uh, it's uh, deeply disturbing. You know, like having to see that someone at that young age had to go through that. You know, and the things that you are explaining now, like having to like. Uh, make breaks in order for you to get something yeah. for the family it's uh even though we can say that it's something that is common in the villages or maybe back then i don't know how is it now uh but it's it's something that is it, it's not good at all you know no, i sometimes heard of these stories where my mother would tell me and say that my grandmother would go to families to make breaks, you know, and uh, you know, and the to payment is not school. money most of the times. You see, you see. Mm -hmm. So I I I can relate to yeah, what you're telling me. You so so yeah you can you can continue right. and tell us then what happens after then. Yeah then I'm I moved to the city, the best time of my life. I was yes. excited. You know at the time I saw a great opportunity because for me it was not even about me attending school alone. It was um, a confirmation that at least it was, you know, uh, the fact that the person who was taking me was a teacher. Yes. I, yes. I was sure that I'm going to sleep, I'm going to go to sleep, having something on my stomach every yes, day. Yes. And uh, for a moment, I, for, I forgot about my family. My family, yes. I moved to the CGC, but to be honest with you, things were not as smooth as, as I would imagined. Yeah, I had imagined. Yeah. Yes. Um, um, you know, in, in, in my book, there are events that I um, I avoided yes. consciously yes. I avoided um, yes. I say this book when I was writing this book I was too I was too careful yes. I didn't want to appear as a victim I just I wanted this book when I done writing this book I wanted somebody to dust themselves off and say that I'm motivated so for the way yes. I'm going I'm going forward I'm picking up wherever I left if you left your degree then I wanted you to say that no let me go in and begin yes. And so, indeed, it, mm, it has succeeded to do that. No, thank you, thank you, sir. You know you. how I even got to hear about this book? It's, 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 I believe it's interesting how I even got to yeah, about hear it, about yeah. it because I was at home, it was during lockdown. All right. And then I, my mom comes back from work and she says, uh, she's telling me a story. Oh, she was wow. listening to Mushobo, I think it was Mushobo. Mushobo Wene. Wene. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, and then she's telling me, about, yo, I had a very uh, painful story. Oh, wow. By, she, she, she didn't even remember who was this yeah, person. Yeah, yeah. And she's like, uh, what she knows is that uh, he's a soldier and stuff. Oh, wow. And then I was like, um, I need to find this. And then awesome. I went to the internet, I, I googled, I'm googling, I'm saying a, a, a soldier who's an <laughs> author. <laughs> <laughs> I did that and then uh, something comes up and yeah. the book, it was there already. And then I was mm. like, I'm sure this is the exact This is book. the one, yeah. But how do I get it now? And mm. then I see it. It's not written that it's available yeah. in the popular bookshops. Yeah. I was like, okay, fine. The author is written there. And then I went to Facebook and yeah. invited you. Yeah. I remember that day when you invited me. Uh, yes. And yes. I thank you for that because since then it has been a great journey. You, you being a brother to me and yes. all that. And uh, you inspired me equally. Thank you. Yeah. Thank I'm you. equally inspired by your strides. Yes, yes. Going back to the things that you say you try to avoid. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah no. Then, um, you know... Um, I, want, um, I was careful of many things. Yes. Uh, my brother Mkuselu, I was with in Cape Town, would tell you that the uh, story of Cape Town, it's uh, actually most people have picked it up. Yes. Uh, some would call me and say that, but uh, Zon, we are robber. We are yes. robber. There is some, you want to say something, but just, you just move away. Yes. It yes. is so. So I, I'm glad that one that the book did the very same um, thing that I it intended was, to, yes. yeah, to, 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 to people. Mm, so. Yes. Um, I was very careful, but um, 
in the national life in Lusigisi was not as easy. Okay. It was not. It was not. Um, just to touch, I don't know if I touch, but uh, just to touch a bit on it. Um, I became a domestic worker okay. in payment for me attending school. Attending school. But the, the, the thing is, the person who took me there, which is Mr. That, did, did not it really did not know, know about it. it. And yes. I never wanted, because well, she's such a beautiful woman with a beautiful heart. Yes. Yeah, but um, I faced a lot of challenges when I got there. You know, yes. serious challenges, but then it's fine. I managed to complete my education, my, my, my metric. <clears throat> then, you know, uh, in 2001, when I went back home, um, having passed my metric, I uh, went to end up in, then when I came back, you know, the situation that I left at home yes. was staring at my face, now being worse. Yes. The poverty was still there. Um, the, the struggle in my family, especially still my mother, there. was still staring at my face. So yes. I took a decision. Uh, one day to say that no, I'm leaving home. Where am I going? I did not know. But if you are from where I'm, where I'm from, you would know that anyone who's looking for could either go to Cape Town or Tepe. Yes, yes. So I made the comparison between the two areas. Which one is more affordable? Yes. I did not have money. Right. Tepe was a better option for me. So I went to one of my aunts. Um, one night I said, Hey, mama, mama, boli, the man. Yes. Then she gave me the money. I can tell you, three o'clock I was working. Uh, I think from my place, uh, from my home to the nearest town, is about 30 something kilometers, a gravel road. Yes. I walked. Okay. I walked in the morning. You're walking to Mtata? To Mtata, yes. yes. Okay. All the shortcuts that I thought of, but lucky enough, I got a lift, but I was, I was close with my plastic. Took a take side, 90 rand. I think it was 70 something rand at the time. Yes. Um, I had, yeah, I borrowed 90 rand. I took a taxi to Tepen. Okay. Who am I going to? I did you not don't know. know. Where am I going? I did not you know. Don't know. All I knew that is that I, all I knew at the time was that I could not bear the situation that I'm at that, home. that is at home. Yes. Understand? So I left. And you wanted to do something. I about wanted to do something about and it. And taking so, a very huge risk. A very huge. A, actually, you will understand that it was a huge risk indeed. When I got to Deben, you know, when you get to those big taxi ranks. The moment um, they open the door, you will hear Mlazi, yes, Nanda, yes. busy up then, and down. That, then it dawned on me. Wanda, where are you going? Where are you? That time I had no money because I, I remember I bought fruit um, uh, at Mtata. I yes. bought fruit, then I ate on the road. Where are you going? Yes. I remember climbing off that taxi, looking around. And at, at the time, I was 17. Yes. I was. It, I would like literally not because I was learned by, by by nature, but um, I think also the conditions. Yes, I was yes. tying, I was tying. I looked around, I could not, I could not see any face that was familiar. When you had Bria taxi rank, there is a bridge where um, the, the, the um, and the, uh, a train rail on top, yes. So, under that bridge, as I looked that side, was I, I stood there for a good hour plus thinking with having that hope that I'll see somebody that I know, but it was not to be. Yes. But then as I looked under the bridge, I saw guys who were um, surrounding the fire, they were sitting there. Remember from the location, I don't know anything about the street kids or anything of that kind. Yes. And I, I don't know. That, that was um, a, a scene to me. I went with those guys, think that I, it's people that just were sitting there. But then when I greeted them, I saw that no, no, I was not welcome there. Okay. And can you just tell us how what time of the day? At night. It was at, at night. night. Yeah, it was at night. Okay. Yeah, it was at night. It was at night. It was at night. I cannot recall the exact time, but it was. It was, it was at night. Evening, yeah. Okay. So I went to those guys. I greeted. The response was that you are not welcome there. Yes. So as we they were sitting that. at the middle of the bridge, but at the edge of the bridge, I saw a spot. There. I chose that spot. Okay. I went there. I, I slept because I slept. I, I, I was lying on the bridge, but I never slept. Okay. To say, I never closed my eyes. Then I think now, close to the morning, that's when now I was getting drowsy and all that. But I remember hearing the, uh, the, the birds singing, the trains it's now in, in the, the morning. morning. The rush hour, you understand, yes. the taxis. I woke up, just kept my thought, wiped my face, yes. you understand. Then I moved. You know, Deppen, I normally say that Deppen, I still have a vivid memory of it in my mind. Yes. I know Deppen very, very well. I walked it from from Bria to South Beach, North Beach. There's a street they call Smith Street. 
Yes, I yes, know that's the very, very one. That's where I would go into the Indian shop looking for a job. But I would be chased away people. And I understand I was You're very young, young yes. at the time. I would be chased away. That is the first day. Yes. The whole day up and down. Nothing. nothing. Remember then, I, I do not have money. I do not have food. Yes. I have nothing. Second day, the same thing. This thing, um, you, you cannot survive without food. It's a, it's a lie. Yes. For two days, two full days, I had nothing, nothing. absolutely nothing, and sleeping under that bridge. Yes. Then on the third day, um, I did the same thing in the morning, but towards the afternoon, I decided, no, no I'm going to approach this aunties who are selling uh, at the rank. Yes. Because now for me, it was not a matter of finding a job, it was a matter of finding food. Yes, because I was now losing strength. Yeah, yes. I, was, I was starving. Yes. And uh, I think I was becoming like, now I was more... I was becoming like more of these guys who are staying on the street because I was dirty, yes. hungry, yes. powerless. I went to this lady, I said, no, Bengalanji, eat banana. And the old lady gave me one, though she gave me with that attitude, yeah, you understand, but she gave me a banana. But then, as I was taking the banana, walking backward, I felt a tap on my back. Yes. Hey, Wanda, when's that happen? I felt like, I don't know how heaven looks like. Okay. I felt like I was entering heaven. Just we have somebody mentioning my name. Yes. yes. Because I think I was in at the, the edge of nowhere. Absolutely. I think I was at the edge of saying that no life. I'm done. I'm yes. done. Then um, it was one lady from my location, Pindiwe. She's okay. Pindiwe. I told her the story briefly. Then she said, No, no, no. Let's go. That's how the story of Tepen uh, starts. Starts and then. Yes. The rest is history. When so she gave me a place to stay. I looked for employment. I got a job as a security. But then it didn't. I didn't last long in Teben. Teben was just not for me. Okay. It was the first month I would walk literally from Nanda. See those who know Nanda to Besta. Yes. Besta. Then Besta Phoenix. Well, that's where I was working as a security. No Veralem. First it was Phoenix, then Veralem. So it was very, very difficult for me. And uh, every time when I'm walking from Nanda in a place called Wamkung down to Wapesta, I would see people getting robbed. And it scared the hell out of me. Yes, yes. So I decided, no man, let me move to Cape Town. I moved to Cape Town um, to my cousin. You know, life. Ne? Yes. When I got there, yes. what I experienced in, in Lusigisigi was nothing. Got I was there looking for employment. I remember this other time. I'm not going to bore you with all the details, but there's one event that still bothers me even today. I remember this, as I was looking for employment, not having any money, nothing. Yes. I woke up this other morning going to the kitchen, not even to the fridge. But as I was walking to the kitchen, I passed the fridge and there was a note on the fridge to say that yes. Meaning that the I remember food, it very well here on this book. <laughs> And I feel like I do agree with the people who say that you actually robbed us. There's a lot of <laughs> you are there's right. a lot of yeah, no, there is, there is like leading to you. that and after that there is a lot. There yes. is a lot. I think if I were to you know there's a guy that uh, there, I, I think uh, we we have been approached by two or three I think three people wanted to make a, um, a documentary out of this book. Okay. I think that's where things will come up. Okay, okay. I, That's you know, great. the writing was uh, rather an emotional journey. Some it of the should. things you don't want to remember. Yes. You don't yes. want to. That is why uh, my brother will tell you that, you know, I never pass, I never, I never pass a person on the street ne wanting food. No, not those ones who want money for photo, but yes. I would never allow anyone to go to bed hungry. I don't care if I must take my last penny run yes. because I know exactly how it feels. How it feels. Now, going back to the story of the fridge, you know, that ne, if you ever saw us, I don't know, you've, you've never seen it, but I felt like someone was just opening my chest and cutting my heart off. Because here I am, I'm every day I wake up in the morning and I go and look for employment, you but I find not, this. And I was the only one who was not a learner or a student. Yes. I was the only one who was not, not working. working. So yes. the message was directed, directed to, to me, you, you understand? Yes. But you know, out of every bad situation, there is an equal, equal opportunity. Yes. That gave me more strength to look for employment, which yes. I ended up getting. I was a potato peeler in, a, in one of the shops. Uh, um, uh, what is this? Gispy shops. Okay. Then at the same time, I would um, sometimes do two jobs. Uh, I was also working in this other hardware, ended up at the garage. But I, I, want, I want to 
say the book to people, they must get the book. Yes, those yes. who have not bought it yet, yes, I don't want they to give out the should. book. Yeah, here is the book. Yeah, I don't want to give out the book, but it's a yes, the story is there. Yes. The story is there. The story okay. is there. Then Cape Town, I worked at the garage where things started changing. Then from the garage to old mutual, old mutual, then to the military. Okay, okay. yes, where I currently am now. Okay, and then how was it like in the military just as we are about to? like end the part of the book because you guys have to buy the book so you can know everything that yeah. happened on the book you know uh, my brother i'll tell you one thing about the military i don't know let me take you back a bit i remember at, at the lower standards because we're using standards then or yes. subs when we were at the low at, the, at very lower standards or sub i cannot remember when we, the teachers would normally call us we line up yes. Kwanda, Yes. I want to be a doctor. Uh, one of my don't eat was always the very same answer to okay. me. I want to be a soldier. Why and, a uh, soldier? Why? I don't know. You don't know. I don't. Have that, you then I don't a soldier know. at that time? But anyone who's from um, where I'm coming from will tell you that there are people who are, who are 40 years who've never seen a soldier except on TV. Okay. There, it's uh, you know, seeing a soldier in my in my village. Ah. Uh, Never. 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 We would see soldiers on toys and we used to play and everyone would chose to be a soldier. Okay. When you, you know when uh, those families we had some things would come with toys, everyone wanted to be a soldier. A soldier. Yes. So it's a dream to me that I'm glad that it came through. Yes. I yes. passed my metric in 2001. Since that year I've been up, I had applied in the military. 2002, 3, 4, Every 5, year. 6. I applied. There's no year that passed without, without me applying. you applying. Then, remember, military takes from 18 to 22. Yes. Then, imagine applying from... Actually, I started applying when I was 17. It was, I was, it was when I was doing my high school. Yes, yes. So, when now, on my very last chance of being of having an opportunity to join the military or to serve, then that's when I was taken. For me, that's I true. think that, that's exactly what really appeared to me to say that dreams... They do, come they do true. come true because yes. just on the last minute, then I was taken. It comes. And okay. we also we also learning something from from your story that uh, you know uh, for people it's it's so easy to give to give up. Absolutely. You know, you just try once, and then if it doesn't happen the second time, you say that no, nah, it's, it's, it's not, not for meant me. for yeah, you. Yeah, you know? we are very correct. We are very the patience of having to apply every year. Every and nothing year. Coming, every year. You know? Every year. And also to add on what, on what you are saying, you know, sometimes what I've realized, people give so much effort into whatever that they do. But then when they're, when they're about to achieve the results, they say, ah, they give up. They give up. Yes. As long as you are still breathing, push up until yes, you cannot yes, push home. anymore. Yes. You understand? Yes, and because what I normally say is that when you push more, the results don't matter to you. Whether you pass or you fail, if you fail, you will be proud to say that no, but I don't regret it. I gave my yes, all. Yes, you gave your. Best. If you pass, you'll get the reward and you'll be happy about it. Yes, so there are no regrets forward. when you The regret comes when you know that Ishmael, if I could have done, I could have, I could have done, done more. Yes. So give your all, invest in your craft with every fiber of your being. That's my story. That's great. You asked me a question about the military. Yes. yes. Yeah. You know, uh, military, military, military. We grew up. Having this perception or notion, you know, the military is for uneducated people, people this, yes, people yes. that, people that, and I think most people still have that. Yes, yeah, it's still there. I can tell you, still when there. I joined the military, I only had metric and maybe one or two certificates. Yes. But can I show you something? Yes, please. You I can. think it's important. You can. Yeah, I think it's important. Sorry, I think it's important. But I show you this. I, I hope uh, they can see. This is my this is my file. Yes. This is my file. You see, you've done things in oh, let, 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 let's let them see. <laughs> this yeah, I'm gonna give to you everything that you see. Yes. These. Yeah, you you are the one who's gonna you see all these I achieved while in the military. All these I achieved while can in you the see, military. Guys, I'm sure you can see this. Okay, I think I should name them. Yes, please. So that if people are... Uh, this is my metric. Yes. Very bad. Not that so, bad. This is my advanced certificate in fraud examiner. Yes. And it's an American qualification. This is um, one of the courses that I have, I have done before the um, certified fraud examination. Yes. 
this is my a plus computer technician course this is my pi qualification yes this is my um, intellectual property crime investigation qualification that is the uh, where we in the we're investigating Online, counterfeiting yes. and, and piracy this one it's a uh, transnational trans yeah, organized, organized crimes. crimes yes same but i think yes. this one is in the middle this is in an advance okay. This one is a financial crimes investigation course. This one is um, investigating cryptocurrency crimes. Anti-counterfeiting operations yes. law. We're still counting, guys. <laughs> investigating on medical industry. Uh, this is one about preparing the report of inter yes, intellectual property, property crimes. crimes. This one where you, where you investigate something from the videos or the voices where you clean it and investigate okay. it. Okay. This is one of my certificate that I joined the military with. It's a leading and visioning. Yes. Managing and developing. This is a, a, an award from the financial crimes investigation because of the work that I did and how I did at school uh, at the school. Yes. Uh, this is information system security. Wow, guys, <laughs> I still count it. Okay, then we should not name them just for the time. Yes. This is another one. I'll just say this is another one <laughs> until we are done. This is another one. Yes. I think we won't get done anytime soon. Yes. Let me just move faster. Yes. So I just want to say that military, um, anyone who tells you that people in the military it has given not, you so much. It has given me so much. It has given me so much. So, 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 so much. These are my awards from the military. You yeah. see, guys, these. Um, We're gonna is, start naming again. This is my military law. Yes. This is my diploma in um, risk management and security. Yes. Detect degree. Yes. This is a certified for the. And uh, um, as much as this is a certificate, ne? Yes. This is the most, most I, I don't know what to say. Well, this is a rare course. This is a rare skill certified for examination. Yes. This is one course that I take it as a senior course. Yes. And we are waiting the one of the, the, the masters. masters yeah. Yes. And the PhD. And the PhD is coming. So, um, sir, to answer your question on military, um, that is just, um, I would not say a lie because people don't know. Yes, that's it's true. A, that's it's a true. myth. That's true, and I like that mm -hmm. you are explaining because there is so much that we don't know about, about the military. military. And I'm happy to explain you know? that. You because know, we, we, when you think about the military, we only think guns. about the wars and the guns. Absolutely, it's not like that. Ends there. It's not like that. You know, in the military, I can tell you now, most of the qualifications that you see, I never paid a cent. Military right. paid for them. Military gave me time. Yes. When they know that I'm writing tomorrow, I'll get a start to leave a day before. And I'm always affording them. But whether I'm on deployment somewhere, you will be afforded an opportunity to start. You to start yes. you, That's great. Even though that I pay for myself, there is an op option for me to go and claim that money from the defense force. Yes. That is yes. one supporting organization. That's great. And That's great. With, even within the military, some um, join the military l loving. Uh, what is the what, what is your field of qualification? I did PA law. Law. Yes. With, there are people who get into military having a metric. Then they choose to uh, to to to, um, to pursue, to pursue law. Yes, yes. It supports them, and there are those who attend full time classes at the expense of the military. Yeah. So um, it's not correct to say that once we're in the military. I know some who have joined the military may be having dropped out on their third year or fourth year yes. in law or medicine. Yeah. Then the military takes them forward. They continue. So that's a story about the military, and it's a very supporting organization. Yes. Also with business. All that all, people normally say that you cannot do business when you're, all that we have to do is to declare it. Yes. And personally, um, I, I can never do um, business with the, with the defense force, though I am allowed to. Yes. Okay. Though I, you are allowed as long as you have declared it. Yes. So um, most um, most statements about um, military and any other department within government are not true. Okay. Are not true. So all even the book, this book, the time that I had, I would write this book in my office. Yes. At work, even though I wrote it in the very same office where we are now, yes. but to polish yes. and clean, I cleaned it in the office. Work, yes. I sometimes use the resources from the from military. Work, yes. I've had 
uh, book launches. I've, 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 I had two book launches, and one of them was done by the military. The military. At their, at their expense. That's great. That's so great. it's a very supporting uh, and supportive organization. That's great. Yes, sir. Okay, and then uh, before we end the interview, I'm just going to ask you, and then how did you get into the, 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 the private investigating okay. field? How does it, it, it come with the... Is it also related to the work that you do in SANDF? Or is yes. it just something that you were interested in? It, it is something that I... I okay, I, I was always fascinated by investigation okay. for, for the longest time. Yes. But then also the kind of work that I'm doing in the military, you know, when you do something, you always want to grow. Yes, yes. That you want to be better than yesterday. So it has been like that. So I did this course of private investigation because of the work that I'm doing. Okay. So it propelled my interest to where I am today. And um, I think from there I've been developing myself every day because in this field we have to learn something every day because even the criminals are, are, are yeah, making developing their ways. Themselves also. Yeah, every every yes. day, every day. So you have to be abreast. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, that's great. Uh, we're going to end the interview now, and we're going to talk about his business in part two of the interview. Uh, we're going to talk about his private investigating company. Please do stay tuned and watch the second interview. Thank you so much for the interview. Thank you. Uh, Thank you, sir. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing for more content. Thank you. Thank you.